So welcome, everybody. Um, we'll get things started, but thanks for your patience there. Those of you that have uh, been on for a few minutes now, just kind of waiting to get settled. And uh, I think we're all we're all ready to go. But uh, my name's Aaron. We're going to do some official introductions here in a second. But welcome to tonight's Getting to Know Lakehead uh, webinar focused on student success and getting prepared really for September and joining us in the fall. Hopefully you guys are ready to start your Lakehead adventure with us. And I know it's obviously been a difficult time and, and kind of a challenging year all around for, for everybody, but especially our uh, high school and post-secondary students. But uh, it is still an exciting time and we're looking forward to uh, having everybody back uh, with us here in, in the fall and, and hopefully getting going. And, and like I said, really getting started to uh, start your journey with us here at Lakehead University. So thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule here this evening. We've got lots to kind of cover. Um, we do wanna make this as interactive as possible. So we do have uh, a bit of a presentation here formally for you guys to take you through lots of information around um, important uh, you know, tips and tricks on, on getting comfortable as a post-secondary student for September. Uh, but if you do have questions through this evening, feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, that'll allow us to kind of moderate those questions as they come through. Uh, and myself and Aaron and some of our other staff members here this evening will be answering questions throughout the presentation. Um, you can still use the, the chat feature, uh, which is also available through Zoom. Uh, but if you can use the Q&A just to use some of your, uh, your formal questions, that would be great. Uh, and we'd be happy to chat with you and answer all the questions you may have here this evening. Um, just a couple kind of housekeeping notes uh, for uh, this evening's webinar. Everybody will be muted uh, and there will be no video for anybody aside from our hosts and uh, our panelists here. Um, in terms of uh, kind of the webinar, obviously we're all working from home, which has its own challenges. Uh, so we appreciate your patience. Just bear with us if there's any crazy internet uh, connectivity issues or dogs barking or my daughter crying in the background or something crazy. Um, they're just the times we're living in and uh, we'll kind of roll with it. So we appreciate your patience if there's any technical issues. Um, just lastly with housekeeping, um, this webinar will be recorded just so we can share it with our uh, other guests who weren't able to attend this evening. Uh, and some of our future students uh, as well. But uh, let's get things started here. So in terms of introductions, um, I mentioned earlier, but my name is Aaron. Uh, I'm a recruitment officer here at Lakehead University. Uh, I work within our enrollment services department. So most of the year, uh, I'm kind of assisting students with uh, all things Lakehead, whether they're admissions questions, you know, residence, scholarships, financial aid. Um, I technically work out of the Lakehead Aurelia campus, but I do recruit for both Thunder Bay and Aurelia, and, and I've been up to T-Bay lots throughout the uh, eight years I've been at Lakehead. So if you do have any questions, uh, I'm happy to help uh, answer those this evening. Uh, and then we also have my colleague, Aaron McRae, who is uh, here in recruitment as well. So Aaron, I'll turn it over to you for a quick intro. Thanks, Aaron. So as I already mentioned, my name is also Aaron, uh, but I am an alumna of Lakehead University. I graduated few years ago, but I will be behind the scenes kind of typing away on a lot of questions. So I'm also based at the Thunder Bay campus and I'm born and raised in Thunder Bay. So if anyone has any Thunder Bay questions, definitely feel free to ask me. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. So tonight's uh, webinar is the Getting Ready for Lakehead webinar, and it's focused on student life and student success. So we've got two uh, great panelists from our student success department and our student accessibility services department uh, that are going to be doing a little bit of a presentation here. So maybe we'll turn it over to Nancy and Hartley to do a little quick intro uh, just before we get started here. Hey everyone, my name is Hartley Mendelson. I'm a student success advisor on the Thunder Bay campus. Uh, definitely leading the charge on orientation, first year experience, leadership, and a lot in between. Um, and I'm from the Student Success Center, which you will learn a lot about today. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Hi, everybody. My name is Nancy Cahill, and I'm a ma the manager of Student Accessibility Services at Lakehead University. Um, student Accessibility Services provides support to students with disabilities and medical conditions, and I'm looking forward to sharing with, um, uh, with you some information about how you can access those supports um, at Lakehead University. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So just before we turn it over to our panelists here, just to get into their, uh, their presentation, um, we know there'll be a lot of questions kind of around maybe course registration and fall delivery. Um, I'm going to allow Aaron to post the web link in the chat just so you guys can access that later today. 
Um, but we have announced, if you haven't else, uh, seen it already, that we are uh, committed to in-person learning for our fall 2021 semester. So obviously um, we continue to work uh, in terms of um, providing information to students around their program and how that will be delivered for the fall. And I know we'll be touching a little bit on that uh, here this evening, um, but Aaron and I can hopefully answer some of those questions and uh, the best place to get any information around COVID-19, return to campus, program delivery, residence, um, do visit the Lakehead U COVID-19 webpage. It's a really good resource. There's a full four students uh, section uh, where there's a really nice FAQ document that you can you know, click on your question and get a quick uh, answer in response to how that uh, is impacted around fall delivery and, uh, and hopefully our return to campus for fall semester. So I know it's a, a tricky situation. We do have a uh, course registration coming up pretty soon here in early July. Uh, so for those of you that are wondering when course registration opens up for students that are registering for courses for our fall term, it will be at the uh, start of uh, July. And you guys will receive uh, emails in the coming weeks, I'm sure from Lakehead around course uh, registration, um, program delivery and, and kind of next steps. So just keep an eye on your Lakehead email for any updates. And, uh, and like I said, Aaron and I can uh, provide some information around that later this evening uh, as well. So I will turn it over to our panelists here to kind of get into our Student Success Center and, uh, and first year experience at Lakehead. So Nancy and Hartley, take it away. Awesome. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the student I, I was going to tell you a lot about the Student Success Center today. I'm excited to share that with you and um, letting you know a little bit about the Student Success Center. We're there to help all of our students through a number of different supports. And you'll see them on the slide there. But our academic support zone is a great resource for students to learn the skills and tools they need to succeed through tutoring, writing support, academic advising, workshops, webinars, and much, much more. Our career services are offered through our career zone, which provides valuable services to all current students and alumni uh, to help them with job searching, resume building, networking, and much, much more. Our cooperative education program guides our students through professional paid work opportunities relevant to their program. It's only available for students who have a co-op option in their program. So you'll definitely wanna look into that. Uh, and orientation, um, a big piece that we're working on right now, transitioning to university can be hard. So we're putting together all of the tools, tips and tricks to help ease a new student's transition to our university. Um, through our orientation programming, you'll be able to build community, get up to speed with university level learning, learn about the wellness supports on campus, start thinking about their future, uh, start thinking about your future and the tools to support your journey uh, throughout university and learning about uh, all the different supports regarding student business and the financial side of university. Um, we also offer some great opportunities for students to develop leadership skills, participate in fun events, and much, much more. Um, we have a lot going on, and we always have something to offer you, and we are amazing at giving out referrals. Um, we'll be going uh, into a little bit more detail about all of the services uh, now as we go into the next slide. Um, as you may know, a university classroom setting is quite different from high school. Uh, portions of students might be in a traditional lecture, others might be in a lab, some may be outside, some may still be online. But no matter what, uh, learning the skills to adapt to each of those settings is going to take some time. Um, you know, be patient with yourself. There are a few basic skills to be aware of when making the transition, and these are great tools that a student success advisor uh, uh, setting up meetings through my success can help you with. Um, but time management. Learning how to juggle class time, homework time, due dates, study time, and adequate prep time is important. Uh, you may find buying an erasable calendar will work or using the Google Calendar, which is integrated with our Lakehead emails, uh, works best. Either way, you'll need to build time into your schedule for things like studying, research, or presentation prep, uh, prepping around your classes or a job if you're working, as well, just making sure that you're building breaks into your schedule as that's so important 
You need that personal time to stay refreshed and finding out balance is key. And also a quick plug for a, a raceable calendar. Uh, that is one of the swag items we are giving away this year for our orientation. Um, so definitely make sure that you grab a swag bag once school starts. Um, note taking. You'll have to take notes no matter what. Taking effective notes is a skill that will help right from the start. This looks different for every student and also may differ class to class. We like to recommend a method called the Cornell Notes Method, which is a way to divide up your paper to assist with taking effective notes. You can find a, all of our resources about this on our Academic Support Zone webpage toward the bottom, which we will put the link into the chat later on. Um, exam and test preparation. As with many other things on this list, there will be very individual, they'll, they'll be very individualized. It's extremely important that you prepare right from day one. Organizing what you learn right away will reduce anxiety down the road and reduce needing to cram and learn all of that information, which just never quite works. Um, staying healthy, finding study groups, maintaining relationships with your professors and your TAs and your class, uh, classmates, all great ways to help prepare for tests and exams. Um, writing academic papers. This is arguably uh, one of the bigger challenges that new students face when coming into university and understanding how to properly format a paper, use citations and references and build out arguments is a huge help. And we have resources available to help you along with that, which I will get into in a little bit. Academic integrity. This might be a new term for some. Academic integrity is honesty and responsibility in scholarship. The whole purpose of university is to contribute to and create knowledge. You are now a member of the academic community and you're expected to submit original work and give, give credit to others when you use their ideas. This includes proper citation, which will vary between faculties. If you haven't heard of the AIM program, which is Academic Integrity Matters, you can self-register for that course on your, uh, on your My Course link and complete that program. Some classes may also have it as a requirement to be completed before proceeding in the class. Um, and study skills. There's so many different study strat strategies and paired with our five-day study plan, we like, to, we like to recommend to students, there's usually something for everyone. The most important takeaway from all of this is that your academic life is gonna change dramatically uh, going from high school or wherever you were before university to uh, university. Everyone is different, so the same things won't work for everyone, but that's what the Student Success Center is here for and the academic support zone. As a student success advisor myself, I can book appointments with you to go over these skills and get you on the right track or even stay ahead. We can also schedule weekly or bi-weekly or monthly check-ins to stay accountable. Um, and I'll get into a little bit about the academic support zone now. The academic support zone is where Lakehead's free academic supports take place. We offer peer tutoring and writing support, both free programs. Our free tutoring is program-based rather than course-based. So if you're in a math course, whether that's engineering, business, or math itself, you can meet with our math tutors who will help you go through your course. Um, we also have course-based tutoring, but that is paid. And we have a private tutor registry where we can connect you with a tutor. Uh, on that note, if there is no tutor for that registry, we can reach out to the professor on your behalf anonymously and possibly find you a tutor who has been very successful in those courses. Um, the peer tutors are students who have done exceptionally well in classes or programs. And for our drop-in tutoring, there is no limit on the number of hours you can attend. It's definitely worth taking advantage of and asking, uh, asking for support when needed. We also offer writing support on an appointment basis. Definitely another thing to take advantage of early on. We have writing coaches who work within our space to help you with any part of your assignment, whether it be the planning stages of your paper or the final product. Our writing coaches can help you discover what you're trying to say and how to say it develop an argument, structure a paper, organizing your ideas, properly implement reflection and uh, referencing and citation, 
and help with uh, self-editing tools to help you down the line. A lot of our students uh, don't take advantage of this, uh, of this resource right away and instead come the day before the papers do. And uh, you know, rather than leaving it right until the end, uh, it's important to work with someone right from the beginning so you don't get to the point where you have to make massive changes, don't have time and stress starts to build up. Um, our academic support zone is a fantastic resource that I definitely recommend you taking advantage of and the website is a lot of help as well. Our career zone. Um, our career zone uh, has a space on campus in Thunder Bay and we are looking into getting one in Aurelia so hopefully that comes soon. Our career zone um, can help on campus and virtually um, with resume building, job searching services, um, and much, much more. They're booked through advising appointments, workshops, drop-in sessions, uh, and we also have lots of supplemental resources available for students to look and alumni to look into. Um, we offer career exploration tools and major maps to help students figure out what their program can lead to and help them develop the school skills and tools they need to get there. There's also a number of great career focus events that happen throughout the school year. The big ones that stick out to me are our uh, career and volunteer fairs, uh, which give students and alumni the opportunity to network and explore available opportunities. The best part about our career zone is um, all the way throughout your entire time as a student, um, you get access to the career zone, but also beyond when you're an alumni, you also have access to the career zone, which is fantastic. And um, similar to the career zone and professional uh, development, we have our cooperative education, which I'm going to get into in just a second. So for those that don't know, cooperative education is a structured method of combining our classroom based education and learning with practical work experience. Uh, cooperative education provides academic credit for structured job experience. Co-op programs alternate study terms with paid work experience that are related to the student's academic field. And again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, not all programs have a co-op, so be sure to check if yours does. And I highly recommend uh, taking a co-op if you have one. It is a lot of fun and great to build on your resume. And I just wanted to note um, for any of the international students that are with us today, um, international students are required to apply and receive a co-op work permit before completing a co-op work experience. So the co-op website has an international student section that provides more details regarding when and how you apply for a co-op work permit. And moving right along into transitioning to university and orientation. Orientation is your introduction and official welcome to Lakehead and our communities of Thunder Bay, Aurelia, and Barrie. Our orientation programming will help ensure a successful academic, social, and personal transition to your university experience. It covers information like getting to know your Lakehead family, tips on what to expect and how to be successful, familiarizing yourself with student services and mental health resources, financial aid and career services. Um, you'll see my course link here. That is our desire to learn platform, which we like to call my course link. And it has a great online orientation that all incoming students will automatically be registered for. This will give tutorials and information on how to navigate the various Lakehead tools needed for schooling, information on the various supports and services available and connection points for students to connect. Um, we also have our fall orientation and uh, this offers many different virtual and in-person programming to build excitement for our students and give them a chance to build community and familiarize themselves with the university. I also wanna do a quick plug here um, for those that might've gotten their welcome emails or an email about an orientation kit. If you haven't already registered for your orientation kit, uh, I recommend doing that soon because that uh, they will be getting mailed out in the next couple of weeks. And we want you to get your Lakehead swag early and start uh, showing your Lakehead pride. Um, on that note, that form will also let you register for a first year group, which I highly recommend, which lets you connect with a lot of uh, different students and student leaders to ask questions, get advice, 
um, and I will post the uh, form to uh, sign up for your orientation kit in the chat in just a little bit. Um, and moving right along to um, some virtual class information. A couple of things that I wanted to share with you because I know we're returning to in-person learning, but we're still going to have some online elements for some courses. Um, and I think it's very important and a lot of our students struggled this year with online learning and adapting. So I figured I'd share some information about that. Um, so as I mentioned, a portion of classes and students will still be learning remotely. And I wanted to touch on online learning just further to help uh, show some support there. So there's two types of online learning classes, synchronous and asynchronous. In synchronous delivered courses, the instructor and students are all online at the same time and the materials delivered in real time using methods like Zoom. This would also be the same as an in-person course, for example. Um, students can ask questions, take tests, participate in discussions online or in person while the instructor is available to assist them. For those students in different time zones or for those who miss these classes, recordings will be available later for viewing. Um, in asynchronous courses, delivery methods uh, in online courses will be self-paced uh, with course materials like lectures, readings, forums, assessments, and assignments uh, made available for students to access and engage with on their own schedule. There are still deadlines and some instructors will release materials on a week by week basis rather than all at once, but students can typically decide how and when they'll work through the course materials. So it's really self-paced um, and definitely worth looking at building your schedule around that. Um, and touching on uh, being a successful online learner, um, as we move on to the next slide here, while online learning offers flexibility in your learning experience, it also requires a lot of self-discipline. You know, it's so easy to get distracted and fall behind as you have to, you know, create your own structure. And if all of your classes are asynchronous, there's no weekly classes to remind you of what needs to be done and to keep you accountable. And you don't have set alarms and a set schedule every day. So it's important to figure out what that's going to look like for you. So planning ahead is really key when it comes to online learner readiness. So what does planning ahead look like? Well, I am about to tell you as we go to the next slide. Is your work area designed to ensure you're successful? You know, consider distractions like technology, communication with family and friends, organization of course materials, resources, and more. Is your computer set up for success? You know, you have to consider reliable high-speed internet, proper computer software, like uh, Microsoft Office Suite, or uh, the Google platforms that we use here at Lakehead, um, course specific programs like Zoom and making sure your computer can run that software. And also what routines you need to establish. Consider structuring your week, planning for important deadlines, receiving support and assistance when needed, and finding a study group. I also wanted to plug again, if you have asynchronous courses, consider putting them in your schedule at the same time every week so that you build a little bit of a routine. And most importantly, as you work through your courses, continue to check in daily to see if there's new course postings or updates. Um, be sure to download course materials as soon as they're posted in case they're not available later or you have any technological issues. And a little tip that you'll see on that slide, we do have a Brightspace Pulse app, uh, which you can find in the App Store on both Android and Apple devices, um, which lets you bring your MyCourseLink account wherever you go from the convenience of your phone. Um, and uh, yeah, so despite us returning to in-person learning, we'll still have lots of uh, online elements, which are definitely transferable to you even working from your uh, room or your dorm or whatever uh, living situation you have. Um, they're definitely transferable. Um, and we're always happy to help at the Student Success Center. Um, a big thing for all of you to stay connected. Uh, we, can't welcome, we can't wait to welcome you all back this fall. Uh, and to stay updated on what's taking place on campus. We want you to follow us on social media, download the Lakehead Success app, which is another app that's great 
uh, that's a great tool to have to stay up to date on all of the different events going on on campus. Uh, we'll be sharing lots of exciting information regarding our orientation uh, events coming in the next few weeks and months. Um, so stay tuned on our various uh, social medias, Lakehead Life for Thunder Bay and Lakehead Life OR for Aurelia. And it looks like we are into a question session here, if anyone has any questions. Yeah, I think, um, so Aaron and I have just kind of been uh, answering some questions in the background here, Harley, and you guys you did a great job kind of covering all aspects uh, of student success there, so I appreciate that. Uh, but we do have one question just kind of around the free tutoring. Um, so the question is for free tutoring for uh, upper year students, do you have to sign up or is it more of like a casual kind of drop-in format? Uh, if you could just maybe touch on how the free tutoring or group tutoring kind of works again. Yeah, so I can uh, touch on that. So if you go through uh, your My Success platform and uh, find the academic support zone, you will find uh, the different uh, subject or faculty program-based um, tutors and their availability. So they have a preset schedule week after week for students to just drop into a Zoom session and ask whatever questions they have. Um, if you have further questions, you can follow up with them, but they do uh, typically have two or three sessions a week that are open for any student to just drop in. It sometimes takes a little bit for you to get through, so possibly expect a five to 10 minute wait time if they're with another student at the time, um, but you usually get through pretty quickly and they are great, uh, a great resource to answer questions. Um, Perfect. I think that should answer that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I think that's the, the only question we've got thus far, but I'm sure they'll keep uh, rolling in. So uh, for those of you that do have questions, again, we've got a couple kind of coming through in the Q&A. Feel free to, to keep on coming and uh, Aaron and I and Hartley and uh, the rest of the staff will keep working through those as we uh, move through the presentation. So uh, thanks, Hartley. And uh, maybe I'll turn it over to Nancy to continue on. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. And um, welcome again. And as I mentioned earlier, my name is Nancy Cahill. I'm the manager of Student Accessibility Services. Um, and tonight I want to share um, some information with you in regards to accessing um, academic supports um, while you're at Lakehead University. So first of all, I'd like to introduce you to the SAS staff. We've got a, a small but mighty staff. Um, um, uh, we've got two offices, um, one in Aurelia and one in Thund on the Thunder Bay campus. So whether you're Aurelia student or Thunder Bay campus, you'll be supported. Um, you can see our staff, we have a, our, our admin assistant is Sarah, who is the first point of contact that you would, um, when you email our office right now, when you are visiting us in the fall, she'll be the one that will be greeting you at the, in our main office. We also have a number of accessibility advisors um, on staff in the Thunder Bay campus, Patricia and um, Leslie and Megan are all accessibility advisors. We also have um, a learning strategist, assistive technologist on staff in SAS who meets with students to talk about um, assistive technology recommendations, learning strategies, um, and uh, um, things like that. And we also have an, ex uh, an access strategist who takes care of um, uh, the, all the tests and exams arrangements for students with academic accommodations, and that's David. Then our team in Aurelia consists of uh, Danielle and Alicia, um, who are very uh, amazing staff, and they are they'll be very welcoming to all of you when you know, to any of you if you ever um, visit our office. So Student Accessibility Services coordinates services and facilitates the provision of academic accommodations for students with temporary and medical temporary and or permanent medical disabilities. The SAS staff collaborates with students and staff and faculty in developing strategies for a successful learning experience while maintaining the academic standards and integrity of the university. The SAS offers a supportive atmosphere where our services are delivered in a respectful, confidential manner. SAS supports students who may have permanent disabilities such as ADHD, learning disabilities, bipolar disorder, anxiety. We also support students who may have temporary or medical conditions such as a concussion, or if you're having surgery, 
or, or you're still waiting for a diagnosis. This is just a brief list of some of disabilities. There are many more. So what does a student with a disability look like? Take a look at this poster. There's many disabilities and medical conditions listed on this poster, such as brain injuries, anxiety, Crohn's disease, diabetes, learning disabilities, ADHD. Most of these disabilities are invisible. Sometimes it is assumed that the person in the wheelchair or the person using a white cane because they are blind or are the only types of people with disabilities. This is not true. Just because you can't physically see the disability doesn't mean there is one. And it's also important to remember to know that disabilities or medical conditions can be permanent or sometimes they're temporary. Student Accessibility Services is there to support students with all types of disabilities. We have students who have a temporary injury such as a broken um, arm and they contact SES because they're gonna need some extensions or some ac academic accommodation to support them in their classes. Sometimes students may, who may have ADHD may need some extra time for assignments and or tests because they have difficulties focusing. Some are, some, someone wearing glasses may need the font large for their tests. Some people who suffer a concussion may need to take frequent breaks. These are disabilities. These are medical conditions. They're all eligible for academic accommodations. I would imagine many of you are familiar with Howie Mandel from Americans Got America's Got Talent. He's an advocate for people with disabilities. His disabilities are invisible. ADHD, OCD, and anxiety. With proper accommodations in place, how he's been able to proceed successfully with his work and life. Next slide. As I mentioned, Student Accessibility Services provides supports in the form of academic accommodations. Accommodations are meant to remove barriers and level the playing field for students with temporary or permanent disabilities and or medical conditions. It's important to note that this is done while meeting the essential requirements and maintaining the academic integrity of your course or program. Accommodations do not modify any part of the course. We provide academic accommodations to remove barriers and level the playing field for all. It's also important to know that all of the information regarding your disability or medical condition is kept confidential within SAS. Being registered with SAS will not be documented on any of your official university records, transcripts, or graduation documentation. Lakehead University is guided by university policies and procedures and the Ontario Human Rights Commission to ensure that students with disabilities and medical conditions are accommodated. We at Lakehead University, we're committed to fostering a campus community that is inclusive for all individuals. Now you may be wondering, how can I access support? What can I do to prepare? If you're a student with a disability or medical condition and you have registered for your courses, you should start to gather your documentation and then reach out to SAS. Remember I shared with you earlier that we do have two offices, one on the Aurelia campus and one in the Thunder Bay, Thunder Bay campus. So keep that in mind because we wanna make sure you contact the correct office. And if you contact the wrong one, don't worry because we can always, we'll always refer you to the right, to the appropriate person. You may have a doctor's note, a psychoeducational assessment, a neurological assessment, a copy of your IEP or a completed copy of our medical form. Whatever the case may be, make sure you share it with us. If you're providing us with an educational assessment, then it's important to know that it shouldn't be more than four years older, old unless it was completed after you turned 18. Once you're 18 years of age, adult scales of the assessment are used. Prior to that, child scales are used. Having an up-to-date doc having up-to-date documentation is important as changes in your medical condition and or functional limitations can occur over time. This is why documentation is required. And always know if you have questions about the documentation that you have, or if you don't have documentation at all, please reach out to Student Accessibility Services as we're happy to help. Now 
Now I mentioned sometimes students will come and they will may not have documentation that's up to date. But we don't want you to worry about that. We often meet with students to, 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 to talk about that and we can help you get what you need to get registered. We have resources at Lake at University to have you assessed if that's required. Often students will come out of high school or college with a dated assessment and SES can work with you to have your assessment updated and look for funding options to pay for the reassessment. In addition, we often set up temporary accommodations pending the receipt of updated documentation. For example, a student may come out of high school with an IEP and you know, an outdated assessment. Well, we can help refer you for a, a new assessment and set up interim accommodations while the new assessment is being completed. I mentioned previously Current and up-to-date documentation is really important, as often the impacts of functional limitations of your disability or medical condition can change over time. So what are functional limitations? It's important to know that, function, that in post-secondary, the post-secondary environment, accommodations are determined um, by a functional limitation. And a fun functional limitation are barriers to learning that someone may experience due to a disability or medical condition. Let's unpack that a bit through some examples. So let's say you're diagnosed with ADHD and your struggles um, or functional limitations might be that you may have difficulties with organization and time management skills and written expression, which can result in struggling with note-taking. So that could be a functional limitation. Another example is anxiety. Your functional limitation might be the side effects from medication that you're taking. You might have, inter might have anxiety when interacting with others, and you could have severe test anxiety. These are just a few examples of functional limitations. Your up-to-date documentation will provide your accessibility advisor with your functional limitations to ensure that appropriate academic accommodations are identified and in place. And once your functional limitations are identified through your documentation, academic accommodations can be determined. So as you can see, here is a, some, uh, a list of some academic accommodations that um, students may utilize um, depending on their functional limitations. Accommodations such as extra time to complete tests or exams, the use of adaptive technology to complete tests, access to note takers for class lectures, as well as having access to your textbooks in PDF format, so you can use software to read them, are all some examples of accommodations. Just keep in mind, this is just an example of some of the accommodations we can provide depending on, your, on the documentation you, we receive. Next slide. As I mentioned previously, all of your disability and medical diagnosis is not shared with anyone other than your, access, your accessibility advisor and student accessibility services. And once you register with SES, a confidential accommodation form is created. And this, the only people that get this copy of, a copy of your accommodation form are your professor and yourself. Let's take a look at what an accommodation form looks like. So here's an example of what an accommodation form would look like. You'll see your name and your student number is listed on there. And below are some academic accommodations for both lectures and labs, placements and tests and exams. As well, each course is listed on, with, the pro, with the professor's name. SAS is, sends, out, sends out all of the accommodation forms to your professors on your behalf. You don't have to deliver them to them. We do that for you. And as you can see, your student, your name and your student number are the only um, identifiers on the form. Your disability is not listed on there as we do not share that. So in addition to arranging academic accommodations for students with disabilities or medical conditions, SAS also has a learning strategist, uh, also has learning strategies, assistive technology support available. So this can help students with time management skills. Um, we work with students to develop schedules that can help you stay on top of your studies. We review note-taking techniques specific to your learning style. 
We have an effective five-day study plan that we review and that will help with studying and provide strategies when you're taking your tests and exams. As well, we can review tips for breaking down your textbook um, into important sections for review. We also have um, assistive software training sessions and they're available for and then where, where our assistive technologist looks at um, assistive device training and also speech to text and voice to text software. We are here to help. Many times students will ask about funding for things like assistive technology and tutoring or reassessments. And there is a grant that's available to students with disabilities that can cover the costs of equipment and other specific services. In order to qualify for this, this bursary, there are a couple of factors though. One being that you need to be a recipient of OSAP and all the other um, one is that you, anything that um, you're requesting or you're applying for must be recommended by SAS and based on your, your documentation that you provided. We can review this in more detail with each individual student on a case by case basis. So I just wanted to share that it's very important that you take an active role in the accommodation process. All contact with SAS must be student initiated. So your student responsibilities are really important when it comes to accessing academic accommodations. Each semester, student, you're responsible for connecting with the Student Accessibility Office to set up your accommodations through, you know, either you're meeting with us in person, through email, or our online intake process. And you must re-register every, every semester. You also um, need to communicate with your advisors um, and uh, keep that communication open, requesting extensions or if you're missing a test or exam, um, accommodation revisions and, that, and other things like that. You also are responsible for booking your own tests, your exams and quizzing, quizzes in, in advance. And you're also responsible to always be reviewing any communication emailed by, sent out by SAS. It's very important that you take, that you are your own self advocate and take on that role, respond, take that role on proudly, ask for help when you need it and reach out to your advisor if you're not sure about something. So next steps for students um, who may have a disability or medical condition and want more information about some of the supports and services that are available through SAS. They'd like you to, you know, um, in, make an appointment, make an appointment with SAS to do that initial consultation. Um, right now we're working um, remotely, but um, we, and we're, we, we are happy to meet with students, incoming students, potential student, prospective students, to um, answer any questions that um, you may have, review your documentation and um, talk about any uh, academic or technology needs that you may, may have. And oftentimes another appointment is required after that to set up formal accommodations, but that initial meeting is important. So how to contact SAS? At this time, we're connecting with students via email, telephone, or video conferencing. So on the Thunder Bay campus, our email is quite easy, sas at lakehead.u.ca. Send an email out and reach out anytime. In Aurelia, our email is oraccess at lakehead.u.ca. And we'll put that in the chat for you. Um, like I mentioned, we're happy to, to help and answer any questions. So please feel free to reach out. Thank you, and I look forward to questions. Awesome, thanks, Nancy. Lots of great info there, and uh, we do have a couple questions that we've saved for you here in the Q and A uh, that hopefully you can answer later for us. Um, the first question is uh, kind of around the psychological assessment. So um, the question is kind of obviously with COVID, um, are we uh, taking virtual psychological assessments? of COVID. Well, at this time, um, virtual uh, psychoeducational assessments have not been going on. 
Um, what we've been doing this past, while we we're waiting for um, health measures, the restrictions to be lifted, we are supporting students by um, using their um, previous documentation. Previ if you had a psychoeducational assessment before, we would use that, put that in place for now as a temporary measure to set up interim academic accommodations. And uh, we would look at if a student had an IEP from high school as well, we would use that as well. And once the restrictions and the health, uh, everything is um, open again, we would um, be able to refer you for uh, uh, an assessment um, in person um, with a psychologist. Great, thanks Nancy. And I do have one more question here. It's just kind of around um, diagnosis and, and setting up accommodations. So um, I know you've touched on it a little bit and we can definitely post a link uh, in the chat just to mm -hmm. provide some better assistance as well. But uh, for the accommodations, uh, does it require diagnosis or a doctor's referral? So um, yeah. how does yeah, that process so kind of work? That's a good question. Um, through the, my presentation, we talked a lot about functional limitations. And um, so we really look at functional limitations that students um, are experiencing and those bar the barriers that they're creating. And those functional limitations are identified by your healthcare professional. Student Accessibility Services does have a, a, a medical documentation form that you can bring to your healthcare professional and have them fill out and they can identify functional limitations. Um, uh, on that form, and then we can put in some supports um, in place for you. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I think we're all set for now, but um, like I said, we'll continue to take questions kind of as we wrap up. So if you do have more questions for Nancy uh, or Harley for student success type questions, uh, feel free to drop those in the Q&A and uh, we'll definitely wrap those up here uh, as we, we close off. So thanks to you both and, uh, and we'll keep it, uh, keep it moving here. So in terms of kind of next steps, uh, for those of you that uh, are looking for more information around things like course registration, um, financial aid, program delivery, uh, I know Aaron and I have been kind of answering questions around that uh, here this evening. So if you do have kind of specific questions about your program, you know, which courses to register for, uh, a really good resource to check out is the Student Central website. Uh, so at Lakehead, uh, whether you're at the Thunder Bay campus or the Aurelia campus, or even if you're a Lakehead Georgian student, um, Student Central is our one-stop shop for student uh, advising. So uh, right from the day you apply to the day you graduate, you'll definitely be working with our Student Central advisors in terms of your progression through uh, Lakehead University. So. If uh, feel free to check out the website. There's some information about how to contact Student Central directly. Uh, you can give them a call during office hours, Monday to Friday. Uh, they do have some drop-in virtual Zoom sessions that they're hosting week to week as well. Um, and uh, uh, you can contact them directly through email as well. So if you do have questions uh, about your program, like I said, course delivery registration, that's a great place to start. Student Central will be hosting uh, a webinar series throughout June and July called FastPass. I know a lot of you have probably registered for FastPass already, but uh, if you're unfamiliar, just check your Lakehead email because you will receive some updates here in the coming weeks. FastPass is going to be a webinar that will be focused specifically on course registration. So if you're nervous about that, maybe it's your first uh, year with us here at Lakehead in September, um, feel free to register for a FastPass webinar date. Um, and they'll walk you through, uh, you know, program delivery, course requirements, program requirements, and it's a really good time to get more information around that. So check the Student Central website. I'm sure Aaron's posted that link in the chat, uh, and that's a great place in terms of next steps for information. Um, I touched a little bit on course registration here, but there are some things that you can start to look at. Um, things like our academic calendar. So the academic calendar uh, is out for the upcoming school year, and I'll maybe see if Aaron can post the link to the academic calendar in the chat. The academic calendar is what you guys will use for course registration for the fall. Um, so it shows you all the course requirements for your program, and you're really going to use that as one of the main tools when you are registering for courses. Um, there's some great how to register uh, video tutorials on the Student Central website where they walk you through the academic calendar. You know, program requirements and how to actually register for courses. So again, 
check out the Student Center website if you want to start to prepare for uh, course registration, which will open up in early July, so only a couple weeks away. Um, for those of you that maybe haven't visited us yet, or you're still kind of learning about Lakehead or Lakehead Georgian, um, we do have our virtual campus tours as an option. Um, so obviously we'd love to host you guys in person so we could do our traditional campus tour programs. Uh, as of right now, we are just running our virtual campus tour programs, but uh, it's a really good resource to check out campus, see the lecture halls, see residents, and kind of get comfortable with the uh, Lakehead experience as a future student. Um, you can register for a live uh, virtual campus tour on our websites, and uh, I'll let Aaron drop the link in the chat. Uh, but our campus tour guides will actually walk you through our virtual tour and kind of answer questions live, which is really nice. Uh, so it's kind of the next best thing to our uh, in-person physical campus tours. Or you can do your own self-guided virtual tours for uh, all three of our campus locations. Um, just some dates to mark in your calendar, some important dates kind of coming up. Um, the deadline to accept your offer of admissions was June 1st, uh, and that was also the deadline to uh, confirm and pay your deposit uh, for both residents and for your program. So those have, uh, have passed. Uh, but in terms of upcoming dates, August 15th is an important one. It's the date uh, payment deadline, I should say, for the first residence installment, as well as the first tuition payment installment. Um, there is some information around how to pay or, you know, fees and tuition payments and all that good stuff on the Student Central website. Uh, but if you do have questions, you can always contact uh, Financial Services or Student Central for more information. Um, like I said, course registration will open up in late June, early July for many of our students. So just keep an eye on your Lakehead email for updates on when that will be opening. Uh, and you'll wanna hop on and start registering for courses uh, as soon as it opens, just to give yourself the best opportunities for preferred classes and course times. Um, residence move-in date is September 2nd. So we are expecting uh, tons of students with uh, all of our campuses here at Lakehead. Uh, and moving into residence for the fall. So keep that in your calendar. And again, Lakehead email is a great place for information around next steps around residence. First day of classes for the fall term is September 7th. Um, so kind of just after that Labor Day long weekend. Uh, and that's right after obviously our orientation uh, events that happen, uh, which is always fun and, and lots of great resources from student success. Uh, our fall study break is an important one. So that starts on October 11th. Um, a lot of schools call that reading week. We call it reading week sometimes as well. That's your fall study break. So if you're a student maybe traveling far away from home to uh, any of our campuses, you can maybe start to plan for that fall study break if you want to come back home, you know, fly home from Thunder Bay to southwestern Ontario uh, or vice versa. Um, just lastly, the second payment uh, tuition deadline is December 15th. Um, and again, I'll let Aaron post a link in the chat around tuition fees and, and, uh, and all of that good stuff from our Student Central website. So mark some of those in your calendar. Again, if you have questions after tonight, we can always walk you through all of this. Um, but uh, we continue on through the, the summer semester. And that kind of concludes the formal part of the presentation. Um, we appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy evenings here. Um, some great resources and information from Hartley and, and Nancy here this evening. We will open it up to questions. So if you do have more questions, hang on the line here and uh, continue to drop those questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, but if not, um, thanks again. And we hope to see a lot of you in September. So we appreciate your time and, uh, and, uh, and we'll leave it there. So uh, just as we can kind of conclude here, I'm just going to open up the Q&A and try and answer some last minute questions. Thank you to those of you <laughs> Jumping offline, we appreciate it. Um, Aaron, were there any questions in the chat that I kind of missed that we can uh, ask Nancy or Hartley here, or you think we're okay? No, we didn't get any uh, questions through chat. Just a lot of links that students should definitely open and copy and save for future. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, I'm just going to check the Q and A here again quickly. So there is a, a kind of a non-student success question, but it's just kind of around extracurriculars. Um, good question. Um, that's not something we covered here this evening, but there's lots of opportunities to get involved kind of on and off campus as a Lakehead student. Um, we've got our, you know, varsity athletics. We have intramural sports. We have campus clubs. 
Um, all that information is uh, on our website, which I'll get Aaron to post in the chat as well. Um, but you guys will get lots of info around uh, extracurriculars and student life uh, during orientation week before your classes starts uh, and just learning about ways to get involved and kind of have some fun. Um, I always recommend do as much as you can <laughs> without kind of impacting your, uh, your studies. I know when I was in first year, I did tons of intramurals. I was part of a few campus clubs. Um, I ended up writing for the student newspaper and the alumni magazine. There's lots of different stuff you can kind of do on campus. Um, so take a peek at the website, keep an eye on your email in the, the upcoming uh, summer months, and you guys will definitely get some good info for what's coming up in September. And then during your orientation week, which is the picture we're uh, looking at here on the screen, um, it's a great uh, week before classes start to have some fun and, and get comfortable with all of that as well. So stay tuned, uh, but lots of uh, things to, to do uh, on and off campus. Um, I do have one more question kind of around course registration. Um, course registration may open up on different days for certain year levels. Um, so keep an eye on your uh, Lakehead email for information about when course registration is opening up for you or your, uh, for your information around your program as well. Um, again, FastPass uh, is a great webinar that you'll want to attend in June or July just to prepare for course registration. Um, but you will be notified uh, in the coming weeks around all things course registration. Um, Hartley, I've just got a question around contact info. Uh, if you could maybe drop your email in the chat, that would be awesome. I've just got a student that's looking for your contact info. And if you want to drop just the SAS uh, email, that would be great as well. Okay. Well, I think we're all set here. So we appreciate again, everybody joining us. Have a great evening, have a safe summer, and we hope to see you guys in September. Thanks again.